Well, welcome back. Monday, February 10th, 2020. We'll get to politics in just a moment. If I may start with the culture, some 23 million people tuned into the Academy Awards last night. And while I know it's easy for conservatives to beat up on Hollywood, I'd actually like to take a different tack. We've talked a lot here, and our movement has talked for a generation or more now of the culture wars we're involved in. The elites and leaders of opinions, news, education, and entertainment substituting their values for the average American's values, or forcing them on us, really. It seems to me there's even a clash, a discombobulation, an inherent contradiction in Hollywood and what it says it wants, what it says it venerates, and what it actually does laud and celebrate. Let me start this way. Tom Hanks is always big at the Oscars and deserves to be. He's an incredible actor. At the same time, he was nominated for a role and received the award last night for playing Mr. Fred Rogers. Mr. Rogers in the movie, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. But what movie received the most nominations for Best Picture and who won Best Actor in that same movie? The movie that received the most nominations was Joker. And Joaquin Phoenix received the Best Actor Award for playing that lead role. What was Joker? I saw it in October when it came out, and here were my reactions then. I never want to hear another Hollywood actor or producer lecture America about the culture of violence in America. It was the most morally corrupt tribute to senseless and psychotic violence I have ever seen. And it is raking in the big bucks. It took in $100 million in its first three days, and it's now taken in over $1 billion. This from a movie that cost $55 million to make. It is, as one reporter wrote, pure anarchy. But with psychosis, clowns, civilians, violence, and more psychosis and more violence. I like a good thriller as much as the next guy, but I honestly had this thought. If an American walked out of, say, North by Northwest or even Psycho and then went to see this movie, he'd truly wonder what happened to America as I kind of have to wonder, too. So much money, so much talent, so much hype. To what end? To what purpose? Why, remind me, did we ban bear baiting and dog fighting and cock fighting in America? Because we believed how we entertained ourselves matters, and pure bloodlust is simply not healthy or a sign of anything good. Now wed that bloodlust to psychotic and senseless violence. In fact, I think it's a major and serious sign of rot that anyone would defend this film based on how great the acting was. Man, was Phoenix amazing, people say. Amazing for what? And how do we know he was amazing? Because he kept us in our chairs for two hours? Laughing, cackling, killing people, scaring people, drifting in and out of psychotic breaks? How do we know he was representing any of that amazingly? I don't know what it takes to play a psychotic, but I've seen a lot interviewed on television, some violent, some not, and they range the span of emotions from the sedate to the hyperactive. Maybe he didn't play it well at all. But may I conclude with a thought Irving Kristol made some years ago? No society can be utterly indifferent to the way its citizens publicly entertain themselves. Bear baiting and cockfighting are prohibited only in part out of compassion for the suffering animals. The main reason they were abolished was because it was felt that they debased and brutalized the citizenry who flocked to witness such spectacles. We are, after all, not dealing with one passing incident here, one book or one play or one movie. We are dealing with a general tendency that is suffusing our entire culture. And the tendency is debasement for debasement's sake all in the name of saying it is art for art's sake and tremendous acting. Well, it isn't. I'm not asking for censorship. I'm not asking for us to be blue-nosed. I'm asking for us to be human beings and to realize this eternal truth also from Irving Kristol. If you believe that no one was ever corrupted by a movie, you have also to believe that no one was ever improved by one or by a book or a play or any art. You have to believe, in other words, that all art is morally trivial and that consequently Consequently, all education is morally irrelevant. No one, not even a university professor, can really believe that. The ways in which we use our minds and imaginations do shape our characters and culture and define us as persons. This Joker movie is 
Well, for anyone in Hollywood that wants to tell me Donald Trump is vulgar, go look at this movie and tell me you think you have the first notion of what vulgar even means. But they'll defend themselves. Oh, and keep in mind, the movie is meant to, above all, entertain. Now think about Tom Hanks. Beautiful day in the neighborhood. And the love in the 1990s, almost all of Hollywood showered on Fred Rogers for his simple messages of decency and protecting children, their emotions as well as their brains. I've played audio of the awards to him before. You see all of Hollywood crying when he's honored, loving on him. And last night they did some of that too by giving Tom Hanks an award for playing him. But it was a supporting actor role, not best actor. But what was Fred Rogers, and what was his constant, timeless, eternal message? His show started in 1962, about a year after serious people started seriously thinking about how entertainment was influencing the culture, specifically our children. Newton Minow was a famous commissioner of the FCC and gave a famous speech on this in 1961, the year before Mr. Rogers debuted. He was lecturing the television producers of the day, but might just as well have been talking about any and all forms of entertainment, including the big screen. He began his speech by quoting one other commissioner, Mr. Collins, saying, Entertainment must have a soul and a conscience, a burning desire to excel as well as to sell, the urge to build the character, citizenship, and intellectual stature of people, as well as to expand the gross national product. And here's how Minow described television. But you might as well speak of the movies or entertainment generally. When it is bad, nothing is worse, he said. I can assure you that what you will observe is a vast wasteland. You will see a procession of formula comedies about totally unbelievable families. Blood and thunder, mayhem, violence, sadism, murder, western bad men, western good men, private eyes, gangsters, more violence, and of course cartoons. True, you'll see a few things you will enjoy. But they will be very, very few. And if you think I exaggerate, I only ask you to try it. If parents, teachers, and ministers conducted their responsibilities by following the box office, children would have a steady diet of ice cream, school holidays, and no Sunday school. What about your responsibilities, producers? Is there no room to teach, to inform, to uplift, to stretch, to enlarge the capabilities? Search your consciences and see if you cannot offer more to our young beneficiaries whose future you guide so many hours each and every day and with so many millions. This is what motivated Fred Rogers to enter television. No coincidence he launched his show a year after Newton Minow gave this famous speech, The Vast Wasteland. Here's what Fred Rogers had Hollywood in tears for saying when he was inducted in the Television Hall of Fame in 1999. And I guess it just went in one ear and out the other. It's irrelevant that it was about television. Just think about bigger budgets, and it's about movies, too. But I quote, quote, Fame is a four-letter word, and like tape or zoom or face or pain or life or love, what ultimately matters is what we do with it. I feel that those of us in entertainment are chosen to be servants. It doesn't matter what our particular job. We are chosen to help meet the deeper needs of those who watch and listen to us day and night. The conductor of the orchestra at the Hollywood Bowl grew up in a family that had little interest in music, but he often tells people he found his early inspiration from the fine musicians on television. Last month, a 13-year-old boy abducted an 8-year-old girl, and when people asked him why, he said he learned about it on TV. Something different to try, he said. Life's cheap. What does it matter? Well, life isn't cheap. It's the greatest mystery of any millennium. And entertainment needs to do all it can to broadcast that, to show and tell what the good in life is all about. But how do we make goodness attractive? By doing whatever we can to bring courage to those whose lives move near our own, by treating our neighbor at least as well as we treat ourselves and allowing them to inform everything we produce. We all have only one life to live on earth, and through entertainment we have the choice of encouraging others to demean this life or to cherish it in creative imaginative ways. Now, if you go see the movie, Joker, you get all that Fred Rogers worried about and got cheered for worrying about, including, evidently, the movie involving him last night. But the left hand is not talking to the right hand in Hollywood because violence and depravity seem to be the rewarded and the attractive thing. 
normalizing and celebrating it, rewarding it, honoring it. That's today's Hollywood culture. It's the opposite of heroism. It's the opposite of value. It's really quite incredible. But as Rhett Butler said in Gone with the Wind, it's just as easy to make money building up a society as it is in tearing one up. I give you the times. I'm Seth Leibson, 602-508-0960. We'll be right back. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about my friends at Guns Etc. They are true American patriots. They strongly support our president, and they have over 10,200 square feet of firearms and firearm accessories. Please take my advice and stop by their store, which is a symbol of American freedom, or visit them at GunsEtc.com and have access to over $350 million in firearms merchandise. <laughs> 